good morning, Lionheart. Good to see you again. I'm sorry that you didn't get the vlog that you so rightfully deserved yesterday. I generally like to do a little bit better, but I felt like anything that I would post would water down my message, and I really had to make that message known yesterday. I had to make a public document that I felt unsafe, and I'm hoping that this will just alleviate two total annoyances out of my life. Two annoying people that I hope will never mention me again, never post a video relating to me again, and that will be over. That being said, I have a great vlog for you guys today. I felt like I really owed you something since you kind of got screwed yesterday, and this one's going to be a great one. This one's got like a lot of weird twists and turns to it, and um, the building that it happened at is no longer there, but it's a place that I've read about through books pretty much since I've been reading about LA film history, and um, it's kind of peculiar. All Like I said, there was a lot of twists and turns, not just in what the story supposedly is that happened, but all the aftermath, the things before it, it's crazy. What we're going to do today is I'm going to examine the death of Ted Healy, the man who started the Three Stooges. Remember when um, I we did anything Three Stooges, I've pretty much told you, it all started with Ted Healy finding these three guys and basically putting their name on the map. Ted Healy was a huge star in uh, vaudeville and then even into NGM. I mean, he was making like 10,000 bucks a week, which was pretty much unheard of in those days, unless you were a big star. And not only was he making that money from MGM, but he was actually hosting a radio show that he was making probably double that. He was just living the high life, living a great life at the time of his death. And I mentioned in the Thelma Todd death that there was a correlation. I'm going to explain it all today. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now come out of the bathroom and this is what I see. Are you comfortable there, fella? Good morning, Joster. Is it too early for you? Okay. All right, I just got a knock at the door and my new comforter has arrived. It's a reversible, two different colors of blue comforter and I'm supposed to be getting actually a ton of stuff today. I think I'm getting my new uh, phone, my new uh, tablet, I think I'm getting my camera lens in the mail today. Should be great. I think it was a blessing in disguise that I called about that phone because yesterday when I was uh, making my first attempt at the video yesterday I filmed it and when I went back to watch it halfway through the, um, the audio got unsequenced with the rest of the video so um, and I've noticed that when I hit record on this camera phone recently, like, sometimes it'll glitch up. You can probably notice it in some of the footage. So hopefully um, I'm getting this, like, done right at the perfect time. I was kind of thinking about walking this one today, but, it, I mean, it's kind of far. It's about an hour walk there and an hour walk back. So I'm kind of hoping that the uh, phone will show up here pretty soon because what I want to do is go do the vlog and then stop off at the AT&T store and have them transfer everything over so I can start using the phone today. Um, especially because the next couple of days are going to be kind of busy. I'm actually working some uh, catering jobs, so like my days are going to be kind of weird and I don't want to have to deal with that. I want to be able to just go out and do the vlogs and not worry about it. So Hopefully that'll happen. It's weird. FedEx just dropped off my new bedspread and they're the ones supposed to deliver my phone. I don't know why I'm going to have like two or three different FedEx trucks coming today, but I guess I will. You like the new bed and the bedspread, don't you? It actually looks like a wrestling mat now. <laughs> well, I had noticed on the delivery ticket yesterday the guy tried to come by at 2 o'clock, so I've been really, really fighting it, wanting this uh, package to show up and not to have to go to the FedEx and pick it up. So I was waiting till about 2 o'clock, and it's 2 o'clock exactly, and I walked downstairs, and I walked out the to the front, and I uh, see the FedEx guy right at the door, like, literally, like, looking to get in, and I go, I bet I'm looking for you, and you're looking for me, and he checked my ID, and boom, there's my stuff, and there we go. I'm going to go ahead and go do the vlog up on Sunset, and then I'm going to pop by the AT&T store and see if they can do a switchover for me. 
Now when I say that Ted Healy was a major star, I mean, we're talking this guy was a big enough star that he was the very first caricature inside the Brown Derby. And right at the end of his career, he was actually starring, he had just started a movie called The Hollywood Hotel, and he was starring alongside people like Jimmy Stewart, uh, Clark Gable, and in fact, there was a really great Clark Gable story. Uh, Clark Gable and Ted Healy were such great friends that um, when Ted Healy in the last year of his life had met a girl, a UCLA student, um, I believe she was like 21 years old, and he married her. It was the second time he had married a woman named Betty, and this woman would actually become pregnant and would bear Ted's son. And um, so everybody, including Clark, knew that Ted's wife was pregnant, and so one short, brief short stint at the Beverly Wilshire while Clark Gable was getting some work done on his house. He was staying there for a few days, and Ted Healy came by to visit him and showed up and said, Clark, I have Ted Jr. in the hallway. Would you like to meet him? And he goes, of course, bring him on in. So Ted Healy went out in the hallway and came walking a live lion on a leash into Clark Gable's suite. And the story was that Ted started laughing, Clark got creeped out and immediately checked out of the hotel. And, uh, but that's just one of those crazy stories. He may have been friends with some of those people, but he also had his enemies because Ted Healy was known as a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde when he was Sober, he was one of the nicest guys in the world to be around, and he was amazingly uh, gifted actor, very charming, very comedic. But when he was drinking, he was an awful tyrant. And he actually had butted heads with MGM's biggest star, Wallace Beery. And Wallace Beery, the reason I say he was the biggest star is, he actually had put in his contract that no matter what anybody that worked for MGM made, Wallace Beery would always make a dollar more, so he would always be the biggest star. And it was actually right here on the border of Beverly Hills on December 19th, 1937. Ted Healy's wife had had a baby that day and Ted was out hitting the town bar hopping. Pretty much every hot spot in town and eventually ended up over here. This building right here wasn't there but it was originally the Cafe Trocadero. And what a wild night it was. That night, the story that has been accepted and circulated throughout history and the reason that the LAPD has continued to keep this a closed case is because the story has basically went in the history books that Ted Healy showed up here one night drunk after his son was born and had got a little mouthy with three college students. The college students uh, wanted to fight him and he said let's go outside. He went outside and all three of them jumped him, kicking him in the head, ribs and stomach and basically leaving him with a brain concussion, bloody on the, on the uh, grounds of the parking lot. Now two variations to this story is that one is that he crawled into a cab went home and three days later died. The other take on this was that his friend Joe Frisco was here, helped him into his car and drove him home. Both accounts say that Ted Healy did not go to an emergency room, but there's also another story to this. There's another part to this that many people believe was swept under the rug. Now the conflicting stories have basically both involved three men. Three men that were pretty much elite at that time in the Hollywood circuit. Wallace Beery. Pat DeChico. Do you remember that name? And Albert Broccoli a man who would go on to produce the James Bond movies. Now what, one of the accepted stories and the most widely touted story was that Ted Healy and Wallace Beery had a massive headbutting throughout the years and basically Wallace Beery wanted to take down Ted Healy. 
One of the stories is that Ted Healy came to Wallace Beery's table that night while Will Wallace Beery was entertaining some friends, was drunk, got out of line, Wallace Beery punched him in the face, helped him back up, and they basically said bygones were bygones. The other accepted story, and basically what the kind of the scandalous story is that Wallace Beery confronted Ted Healy here, knowing that he was in a great mood with his son being born. And Pat DeChico also confronted him. They all went outside to fight, and Albert Cubby Broccoli was hiding, cheap shotted Ted Healy, and the three men jumped and beat Ted Healy, giving him lacerations in the face, a brain concussion, kicking him in the ribs, kicking him in the stomach, and leaving him there basically to die. As I said, Ted Healy went home and died three days later. However, an addition to this story is that Ted Healy apparently called Shemp Howard from the Three Stooges that night, as well as one of the members of the new Three Stooges that had replaced the old Three Stooges, and told both of them that Wallace Beery and Pat DeChico were responsible for his beating. Pat DeChico was the former husband to Thelma Todd who had died two years before and spent her last evening at the Cafe Trocadero as well. There's part of the tie-in. It's widely believed, and now it's kind of reported, that Pat DeChico did most of the beating. However, some people don't believe it because they say even as powerful as MGM was in that time, this was a hot spot, and this was a night that they previewed new talent. And in fact, a week before this occurrence, Mary Martin herself had been discovered here. And so they believe that there's no way with as many people that would have been here, they could have swept that under the rug. However, in the book, The Fixers, Eddie Mannix and Howard Strickling both have said that they did take care of this situation. They basically put Wallace Beery on a boat and sent him and his family away for a three-month cruise. Albert Cubby Broccoli went around town telling, to basically taking credit for the beating, knowing that MGM was going to cover it up with this false story about college kids knowing that they would never let Wallace Beery, their main biggest star, take the fall, as well as MGM just had a policy, no scandals. They did not want scandals in any way, shape, or form. And so Ted Healy, basically left untreated for the next three days, would spend his time at home and eventually die at noon, three days after his son was born. Now, even though Ted Healy was making a ton of money, like I told you guys, 10,000 a week plus, he was doing a radio show that was sponsored by Gillette, as well as one that was sponsored by Maxwell House. He spent the money as quickly as it came in and actually, on his dying day, had no money. And that was one of the stories was that Ted Healy, when he showed up here, didn't have any money and had approached Wallace Beery's table asking for money and trying to get free booze. I don't know. But a famous producer of the day, Mo Howard, said in his book that that man paid for Ted Healy's funeral. Being as powerful as MGM was in those days, they literally just made it go away. The homicide that should have been investigated for a man like Wallace Beery, who, you know, as much as I've read, had a lot of character flaws. The guy was a heavy drinker, heavy fighter, and just a hard-nosed bully to just about everybody on the set. So it doesn't surprise me those two would clash, especially if they were drinking. They basically were the same type of person. But one of the stories that Mo Howard tells in his book is that when he found out Ted was dead, it was actually a mutual friend called him while they were on the road. The Three Stooges were doing theater shows across the country and Mo Howard was talking to this man on the phone and he said that Ted Healy had died and Mo Howard just fell to the floor and covered his head and started crying. And apparently the train that they were supposed to leave on, Curly Howard and Larry Fine came running up to Mo trying to get him on the train. And Larry apparently said to Curly, your brother's cracking up, I've never seen him cry before. And Mo didn't tell him until they got on the train that Ted Healy had died. Their closest friend and the man that made them, gave them their start, made them who they were. It's a sad ending for Ted Healy. His son was baptized a week later and his wife Betty raised him alone.
and I was just driving by this and I'm gonna have to look into what the story is with this address because all that remains here are the gates and what incredible gates they are but everything that was here is gone I don't know what the story is I'm gonna have to look it up see what used to be here or who used to live here look at that and I already know that the good people know this because I announced it on my Facebook page today but the reason that the comments were disabled last night was just for a laugh. I knew the trolls would go crazy for it, and they have. They've been trying to thumbs down all day, they've been trying to comment on other videos, and Dikembe Mutombo of YouTube just goes boom, 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 shut down. I was driving by Goodwill, so I just figured I'd pop in. I don't really need anything. I just kind of felt like looking around since I was in the neighborhood and there was heavy traffic and did find a Smokey the Bear hat. I'm not going to get it, but hilarious. That's pretty cool, but I'm not a huge fan of that movie. That's awesome. For $9.99, that's way cool. That is actually a framed puzzle. Man, that is crazy. That's an actual painting. Wow. I know it's a long shot, but part of the reason I'm coming in these Goodwills is to see if they have any uh, tour guides for any of the countries I'm going to. I already ordered a... Uh, a tour book for Sweden, but there's a couple other countries I haven't told you guys that I'm going to that I'd like to find books for. I bet that book is amazing. There we go, there we go. They have a few in order. Well, in the end, the mystery still remains to Ted Healy's death. <clears throat> as much as I was able to investigate, all I could find was an article basically saying that Ted Healy's widow, his second wife, Betty, and his sister had requested the investigation to be terminated and that they were satisfied that Ted had died from natural causes after his beating. However, Ted's first wife, Betty Marsha Healy, was not satisfied and she continued to look into this for a few years and I couldn't really find out where it went. Um, as much as I could find out was that Marsha had and her lawyer had rounded up 12 witnesses and that's where the story ended it's a sad ending for Ted Healy